I'm online now. B'Shem Hashem Na'asevin Atziach. Unfortunately, for many months, uh, we was Yom Kippur and we didn't have the Mishnah. But now we're back in business. We, um, we want to invite everybody to join us. And um, we're doing the Mishnah regarding the Holy Temple. B'Shem, Mr. Ganji, are you with me? It says, Mishe Zachal Yitron Mizbeach, Hu Yitron Meta Mizbeach. So we're learning the Mishnah talk. This is about how the Kohanim would conduct the services in the Holy Temple. So it says that they would... The first thing the Kohanim used to do every morning... In the Holy Temple was So they used to clean the ashes from the altar from the previous days um, from the previous days uh, offerings, right? Yeah. So it says so when he would start doing this, when he would start cleaning the ashes from the previous day, his colleagues would tell him he's a hair. Are you with me, Mr. Ganjian? It says, he's a hair. He says, before you take the shovel to clean the ashes off the ground, Obviously, before everybody would start working in the Holy Temple, the Kohanim, there was a copper basin, the Kior, right? That they would yeah. wash both their hands and feet. So the colleagues of the Kohen would say, hey, before you start working and cleaning the ashes, make sure you've washed your hands and feet. Right? Yeah. Because we learned this in the Torah, God tells Moshe Rabbeinu, God forbid, you know, the Kohen gets a death penalty if he doesn't wash his hands and feet before he starts cleaning up the temple and cleaning up the ashes or bringing the offerings, the korban. You understand? So that's why his friends had to remind him and say, hey, no hanky panky here, no bachavazi, you know. Because if they don't, I didn't know this. The Rambam also says this is the halacha. You understand? Yeah. mechate natanu bemiksoa. Then akeves la mizbeach bemaravosh al mizbeach. Which means what? It's a rabbi the elder. Where would they keep the shovel that would clean the holy temple, the the altar? They would keep that at the um, yeah, Blinader. Tomorrow, there's we have a picture book. We're gonna bring a picture book. It says the 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 shovel was located in the corner between the ramp right because we know that the Torah says in the end of Parashat Nishpatim since the Kohanim were wearing like a robe like a kind of male skirt there's no steps in the Bet HaMikdash right in the in the, yeah. in the ramp it's a ramp that they would go up the the uh, the shovel was placed there between the ramp and the altar, keves, at the western part, western corner of the ramp. En adam nichnas imo. It says nobody else is going to help him to clean the ashes from the previous day's korbanot. So Kati explains So he says the, the ramp there's oh wow this is a very important halacha. You're not allowed to go 
on the holy altar, the holy Mizbeach, or the ramp, if you don't have business there, right? It's not like an amusement park. So since the other Kohanim have nothing to do, they're not allowed to go there. Only the Kohen that's cleaning up the ashes from there is allowed to do what? Go there. I think this is why we learned the other halacha, that you're not allowed to come into the temple and use it as a shortcut unless you have business in there, right? Exactly. That's why you should always say, Pasuk of Ashrei Yoshre Vetecha. Velo ner biyado. Ela me'alech le'or ha'maracha. Oh, wow, and he's not even allowed to use like a candle. They're asking me online, is there a specific person that cleans it up? Yes. Shalom Leiv. I'm sorry, we haven't learned this for a month. To remember, they would make a lottery in the morning at dawn. And they would pick one Kohen, he would be the lucky guy. No, uh, Shalom Leiv. It would be the Kohen that would win the lottery. They would put out their thumbs... And then the Kohen that would ini mini mini mo win the lottery, he would have the great merit to be the first person to inaugurate and be able to do the first service of God, which was cleaning the ashes from the offerings from the previous day. And he's not allowed to use a candle to help him see, because it was a little bit dark. Rather, the ambers, you know, esh tamid, Mr. Ganjian, there's always a constant fire burning on the... Holy Mizbeach, you understand? So that fire would be your flashlight. That fire would be your lamp. You're not allowed to hold a candle in your hand to help you see where all the, the ashes are. You understand? And the other Kohanim would not be able to see him. Because Kati explains, Because all the other Kohanim were hanging out on the east, and he was on the west. And the, you know, the Mizbeach was very tall. It was like 20 feet tall. It was a tall thing. So they, when he was in the ashes, he wasn't visible to the other Kohanim. You understand? Because the uh, thing was like a wall, like, was like a barrier for them to see him. They were not able to see him. And he says like this, Velo et kolo. They can't even hear him. Kol katin he would be invisible and unhearable. They wouldn't hear what he's doing until... Gilgel etz the shaket yadav atikior until he would, you know, he would have to start refilling water into the netila basin in order to be able to um, clean his hands and feet. That mechanism to pull out the water from the spring and bring it into the kior, that's when they would hear hear. Um, be able to hear what, what he was up to, you know, the Kohen. Then they would say, it was a very formal type of thing, like in when you're in the army, Lahavdil. They would say, the time has come for you to clean your feet and hands, right? Because you know, when the Kohanim, they would do netila, they would do netila on their entire arm and on all their feet. Kidesh, so he would wash and make holy his hands and feet. Then he would go take the silver shovel. Then there were there were still some of the embers of the coal. He would put them on the side. You understand? Because there would still be some coals and fire burning where the ashes were. Chata natal b'machta g'chalim in ha'mochel p'nim v'yarat So what he would take, he would take any coals that were in the ashes and he would take them scoop it up. Scoop it up, exactly. He would scoop it up from where the, the ashes were and he would come to the ritzpa. He would come to the floor the marble floor of the holy temple. 
Hafach Panav Lesafon, then he would turn to the north, and then he would say, He would go to the east of the Mizbeach, Keeser Amot, around 15 to 20 feet, 10 Amot. Then he would make like a big mountain, like a mound of... Um, please remind me, Mr. Ganja, next time I'll bring the picture book to show this to everybody online also. So he would bring, he would make like a mound of coals and ashes over there. Because we learned this from the Torah. It says, You're supposed to put the ashes right near what? The altar. Rachok mina mi keves sheloshat efachim makom shenotnim marot haof. Oh, exactly. From the ramp, it was um, ten amot, but it was actually twenty amot away. This pile of coals and ashes from from the actual Mizbeach. You understand? So he would paste this on the floor, the marble floor of the Holy Temple. It would actually be from the ramp only a foot away, like three fistfuls away. That's where they would always put the gizzard. You know the the red thing that is that is on uh, on the the crop on top of the in a part of the uh, head of the birds. What is what does art school say over there? Mina keves shoshat makom shenot nimbo mar ot haof. The crop of the bird. The crop, right? Right. So they would put the ashes where they would take and put away the crop of the... Because the, there was a type of offering called the Ola offering. That offering, they would um, burn Ola. You know, there's many different offerings they bring sacrifice in the temple. But there's one offering that is totally burnt. The crop... Was, wow, this is very interesting. We're going to learn about this in chapter 3. This same pile of ashes and coals is where they put all the um, old wicks. from the. You know how when they, they, they light the menorah in the temple every day? So the leftover burnt wicks, they also put in this pile. Oh, it was 20 feet, 20 amot away from the eastern ramp wall of the, of the, of the ramp of the altar, but it was three feet away from the northern part. And that's what it's called, Makom Adishon. This, the name of that area is the place of the ashes. So basically the first thing that was done in the te- temple every day was the cleaning of the ashes and the coals of the previous day. You understand? Yeah. And they would also place the... Um, the 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 part of the ola offering, the bird offering, the gizzard, the, the the crop. I'm sorry, the top of the head of the bird that wouldn't burn. They would also rip it off and put it there, and also the wicks of the menorah they would put there. Unfortunately, we're not going to have all Shor. Have everybody a wonderful Shabbat and wonderful night, and thank you for watching.